it does seem completely counterintuitive to, to build a farm underneath the soil, but it's kind of actually the, one of the best environments to do it. When you look at traditional farming and, and all of the problems that are coming down the pipe, you've got topsoil management, unless we really manage topsoil correctly. You've got about 80 summers left in Europe, you've got about 100 summers left in the US, you've got about 120 summers left in, in Australia. And that's because we're not managing topsoil correctly in terms of re-engaging re nutrients back into the ground. 69% of the world's fresh water is used in agriculture. The challenges are vast and, and, and the, the challenges aren't just faced by agriculture, they're faced by everybody. Me and my good friend sat in a pub arguing about these things and that coalesced into let's build a farm under London. The space that we're growing in at the moment is a World War II air raid shelter. This huge space is 70,000 square feet. It's a perfect environment for growing. We have a constant 16 degrees down there. You put in a slight little bit of heat from the LED lighting and that takes it up into the range of exactly where we want it to be to grow the fresh salad crops and herbs that we grow. We've just only recently launched with the UK's premium retailer in terms of food, which is Marks & Spencer's. People expect you to be charging a premium because you do it in an urban setting. Um, there isn't actually a necessity to do that um, if you've got the economics of it right. The one cost that we have uh, consistently all year round is our energy cost. Um, we have the energy cost of the LED lights, whereas if you look at a traditional grower in the UK underneath glass, for I'd say three or four months of the year, depending on how long the British summer is, and I think we all know it's not that long, so they get free energy from the sun. Um, for the rest of the seven, eight, nine months of the year, then they use supplementary lighting through LEDs, or if you want to keep a consistent supply chain, they then import the products from around the world. All of the sort of other cost inputs are exactly the same as traditional farming. Our seeds cost the same, our water costs the same, our nutrients cost the same. It's, it's when you look at the differences between the models, we don't have transport costs as much as you do when you're shipping it in from around the world or you're shipping it in from some rural locations. And we're already in the process of identifying sites in Scandinavia, Europe. We've already identified sort of three or four sites in the US. Farmers are, are looking at the future and, and they start to look at us and say, well, if you can use kind of agricultural technology and you can uh, intensify the yields that you grow produce, can we kind of start to grow in different spaces? It's something that's complementary to tra traditional farming. It's not trying to take over traditional farming.